the focus of this video is on how to interpret the Z test and not really in how to generate the answer to the PERT diagram portion. So you'll notice here in front of you I have computed um, the expected time for this entire column here. So I have the expected time for all of the different activities. And then over here I've computed the variance and I just computed the variance for the activities that I knew were going to be on the critical path. So I first calculated this uh, column here. Then I went down here and I drew my diagram. That was step two. And then I computed it all out. Then I did this. So this was step three, computing the variances. Because I didn't need the variances for the activities that were not on the critical path. Once I had my drawing drawn, um, I could see that, first of all, it was sort of a pain to work with these decimals, that's for sure. Um, and so you'll see that I had to zoom this way in in order to get that box big enough that I could actually write those numbers and in there at those decimals. So um, I'm sorry, it's such a hassle. Anyways, at the end, we determined that this project takes 40.168 units of time, weeks, or whatever they are, to complete. So we go down here, and the project completion time is going to be noted there. So this is going to be computed as the sum of the critical path activity times. Then we go here to this next box, and we're going to compute the sum of the variances of each of the activities on the critical path. So these variances that are listed here are only for the activities on the critical path. We don't want to list um, any, we don't want to add in there any variances for activities that are not on the critical path. So notice over here I say the sum of the critical path activities. Then I go to the next step where I've got to compute the standard deviation of the critical path variances. And remember from your stats days that standard deviation is always the square root of the variance. So if the variance um, right here, I guess I didn't label it, so this is the variance project variance, I bring that down here, I take the square root of it, and that's going to give me the standard deviation for the path right there. So now, this is the spacing for one standard deviation, and in a minute we'll go and look at the chart. But in this problem here, I say to you, uh, what are the chances of completion in 43 weeks or more? So let's just think about 43 weeks or more. So on average, this tells us that it takes us 40.168 weeks, so basically 40 weeks. So what are the chances that it's going to be more than 43 weeks? Well, they're going to be quite small, right? Because on average we get this thing done in 40 weeks. So how often is it going to take us more than 43 weeks? So we can solve this problem one of two ways. We can do this math, 43 minus 40.168 divided by 3.167, and we get... 0.895. So now we need to take this 0.895 and go look this up on the Z score chart. Look at the Z chart, which we have here on the next page. And we're going to go down to 0.89, which is right here. And down this side, we go to 0.8, and then across the top till we get to 9. here, and we're coming right there. So we get 0.8133. So what that tells us then is, how we interpret that is, we have an 89, roughly an 89% chance of completion, let me get this up a little higher here, an 89% chance of completion in uh, 43 weeks or less, but what we want to know is 43 weeks or more, so we're going to go over here and just draw it on here because I just think it's so much easier. So on average this takes 40.168 units of time to complete. 
So when we look at this normal distribution, we know that 68% of the time our project is going to be done in between 37 and 43 weeks. So that's we add these two percentages together and we get that. Now I'm asking you the chances of this project getting done in 43 or more weeks. So essentially I'm asking you for all of this. What are the chances of this occurring? So if we just look at this chart, we know the whole thing is 100%. And we know that if we're at one standard deviation here, we're going to subtract off 85%. So we know, excuse me, 84%. So we know that we're left with roughly um, 100 minus 84 or 16%. So now that we know we're 16% or less, because we're only talking about just this green part over here. We find our number, um, our 43 exactly, so it's actually right going to be just inside of this. Probably right there. I should make that in a different color so you can see it. Just inside of the 43. So we do our calculation and we get um, So we do our calculation we get this 0.894. That's the number we looked up on the z-chart. We look it up and we get this um, 81.33%. So if we were right on the line here, right at one standard deviation, we would say about 84%, but since we're just shifted to the left because this is so much of the curve here, it drops it all the way down to uh, 81. So if the question was 43 weeks or more, the answer would be 81.33%. Since we're asking for 43 weeks or less, the answer is 1 minus 0.8133, which equals right about 19%, 18.7%. If we're talking about 43 or more, that's everything over here. It's about, when I say almost 19%, so 18.7%. So if it's everything over here, it's 81.33%. I think it's important to practice this. This is an important concept out of this chapter, and um, I hope this clears everything up. This is what we were going to cover in class today. So, hope you can enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Bye.